All right, let's get started. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, uh, section 1.1, which is all about angles. And I have a feeling that a lot of this stuff is going to be either stuff you already know, or it's going to be very intuitive. And so I'm just going to kind of go through things fairly quickly. You're welcome to pause the video and write down anything you think you need to write down. Okay. Um, but just a few definitions. So uh, if we have a line that goes through two points A and B, then we're going to call that line AB. And I'm not really going to use any kind of special notation for that. Like sometimes people will write like AB with a little like arrow thing over the top or something. I'm not really going to do that in this class. Uh, I'll just call it line AB. But uh, a line is theoretically it extends forever in both directions, right? So if you don't want it to extend forever, if you just want it to have endpoints A and B, then we call that a line segment, right? So I'll call that segment AB. And then if you only want it to extend forever in a particular direction, then um, then we'll have an endpoint and then an arrow on the other side. So we call this thing a ray. So I'll call this ray AB with endpoint A, right? So A is the endpoint. <clears throat> an angle consists of two rays. Uh, the two rays are called sides, okay? So an angle consists of two rays with a common endpoint, and we call that endpoint the vertex. So here's what an angle looks like. And so there's the vertex, and each of those are the sides of the angle, okay? Um, we measure angles in degrees. Uh, well, that's one of the ways that we measure angles. Another way that we measure angles is with radians, which we'll talk about um, a, a little bit later on in the in the course. But um, but for now we're just going to use degrees and a degree is written as a little circle uh, as a superscript. We read this one degree, right? So one degree is one three sixtieths of a complete rotation. Another way to say that is that one complete rotation would be 360 degrees, which is something I think most people already kind of know. Um, Anyway, uh, but you can measure a, a particular angle like this one using uh, something called a protractor. You don't have to have a protractor for this class because we're not going to be measuring angles this way typically. But the way that you do it is you put the vertex at the center of your protractor. You line up uh, the bottom edge with the initial side, and then you line up the uh, this rotating edge with the terminal side, and then you can see... Uh, what the angle measure is. So it looks like this angle that I've drawn here is maybe about 60 degrees, maybe a little more, maybe like uh, 62 degrees or 63 degrees, something like that. Anyway, you don't have to get a protractor, but but there you go. That's that's like a 62, 63 degree angle, right? Um, notice that uh, when I just measured that angle, I was rotating this free swinging arm in the counterclockwise direction, right? So when an angle is measured in a counterclockwise direction, then we give it a positive value. If we measure an angle in a clockwise direction, then we give it a, ne give it a negative value. So for example, if you have these two angles here, they're really, they've got the same initial side and the same terminal side, but if we measure it clockwise, then it's going to get a positive value. If we measure it counterclockwise, then it's going to get a negative value. So this uh, positive value is, I mean, it's more than uh, its more than 180 degrees, more than 270 degrees. It's, it's almost 360 degrees. I would say it's maybe around 300 degrees or so. Whereas this one going in the negative direction, well, if this is 300 degrees, then this must be negative 60 degrees, right? I'm approximating. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But... But that's the idea. So this one would be, you know, positive 300 degrees, and this one would be negative 60 degrees, okay? Because uh, here we're measuring counterclockwise, so it gets a positive, and here we're measuring clockwise, so it gets a negative value. Um, some more definitions that we'll use throughout the class. If you have an angle that's between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, we call that angle acute. And by the way, uh, this is the Greek letter theta, and theta is a really common symbol used to denote an angle, right? So if theta is between 0 and 90 degrees, then theta is acute. If theta equals 90 degrees, then theta is a right angle, and we have a special symbol symbol for that. We write a little square, 
Okay, so that tells you you've got a 90 degree angle. That's a right angle. If theta is between 90 degrees, <coughs> excuse me, between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, then we call it obtuse. So this is an obtuse angle. And then finally, if theta equals 180 degrees, then we call that a straight angle. If theta is bigger than 180 degrees, I don't know if we really have a special name for that. Okay, so um, so these are the kind of special uh, sorts of angles that we, we could encounter. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Um, another set of terminology that you probably have heard of in the past, I, I mean, maybe, maybe not, but I, I think you probably have, is the idea of complementary and supplementary angles. So if the sum of two positive angles is equal to 90 degrees, then those angles are said to be complementary, right? Another way to say that is that they're complements of each other, right? Not complements with an I. Right? So they're not telling each other sweet little nothings. Right? <laughs> Complements with an E uh, in the sense that they complete each other. They, they, together they make up a 90 degree angle. So complementary means they make up a 90 degree angle. If they make up a 180 degree angle, then they're called supplementary. Or they're said to be supplements of each other. Right? So let me walk you through uh, a quick example of this. So let's say... Uh, that you were given a 37 degree angle and you were asked to find the complement and supplement of it. So find the complement and supplement of a 37 degree angle. So I'll let you go ahead and give the video a pause and see if you can work this out on your own. Okay, so here's my solution to the problem. Um, so my solution. Um, so if I want to find the complement, then I need to find some angle x such that x plus 37 equals 90 degrees, right? This would be to find this would be to find the complement. X plus 37 would e would have to equal 90. Well, so then you subtract 37 degrees. Oh, what do we get? We get uh, 53, I think. So x should be 53 degrees. That's the complement of a 37 degree angle. If we want to find a supplementary angle, then we would have to have some angle x such that x plus 37 equals 180 degrees, right? And so then same deal, right? You subtract the 37. We get 143, I believe. Oh, you'll have to check my math. But 180 minus 37, I think, is 143. So x is 143 degrees. Okay, so those are complements and supplements. Here's another way the same kind of question could be asked. You could just be given a picture, maybe something that looks like this. So you're given like some 90 degree angle, and then you're told, uh, you know, maybe this is 2x degrees right here, and this is 5x degrees right there, <clears throat> right? Uh, so maybe I'll call this part A, right? So so maybe the instructions are find uh, the measure of each angle, right? So find the measure of each angle. Well, we know from the picture that together 5x degrees plus 2x degrees equals 90 degrees, right? Or in other words, we know that 2x plus 5x equals 90 has to be. Well, that's kind of nasty. I don't think 7 goes into 90. Does it? No. Seven, 90 is 9 times 10. No, 7, did, seven didn't go in there. Well, that's kind of messed up. Uh, I guess the best we can do is say that x is equal to 90 divided by 7, right? 90 divided by 7. Well, okay. Um, I wonder how much that is approximately. Well, it doesn't matter. Because, because I'm not... My goal isn't really to find x. My goal is to find the measure of each angle. So I've got to plug this back into to these two angles anyway. So I've got to say, you know, the first angle, 2x, would be 2 times 90 over 7. 
that would be 180 over 7, which is also not a divisible. So we could say um, this equals 180 divided by 7, which is approximately, we'll say it's approximately 25.7 degrees. How about that? So there's the first angle. The second angle would be 7 times 90. Oh, not 7, 5. 5, 5, right? 5x five degrees is the other angle. So 5 times 90 over 7. Oh, well, that's 450 over 7, but it's still not divisible by 7, right? So 450 over 7. What? 450 over 7. It's about 64.3. So there you go. Um, okay, or so that's when you have two complementary angles given to you. If you had supplementary ang angles instead, the picture would look something like this. So maybe you've got 3x degrees there and 2x degrees there. And again, you're asked to find the measure of each angle, right? So you'd say, well, obviously these are supplementary, so 2x plus 3x should equal 180, which means 5x equals 180. And this is a little bit nicer because 5, 5 actually goes into 180, right? How many times? Well, 5 goes into 18 three times with 3 left over, so 36, right? So x is 36. Okay. So then the measure of each angle, well, the 2x degree angle would be 2 times 36 degrees. And that would be uh, 72 degrees. So one of the angles is 72 degrees. And then the 3x degree angle would be two would be 3 times 3 times 36 degrees. Well, that's 18, so 108. 108 degrees. <clears throat> Okay, so complementary supplementary angles. I think you've uh, got the idea. You've probably seen it before. Here's something that maybe you haven't seen before. Um, so uh, when we're measuring with degrees, a second ago I was using decimal degrees, but that's actually that's sort of a mixture of notations. Uh, degrees come from the Babylonians, and Babylonians didn't use a base ten system. They used a base they used a base sixty system. Um, so, uh, so Babylonians wouldn't have used decimals, right? That's a base 10 thing. What they would have used is minutes and seconds, right? Uh, so a minute, uh, written one apostrophe, one prime, I don't know, but we read this one minute, right? One minute is one sixtieth of, of a degree, and then one second, written this way, is one sixtieth of a minute. Or I guess another way to say that is one... 36 hundredths of a degree. So I'll walk you through an example. I'm going to walk you through this example, but we'll do it together uh, on paper rather than just reading the solution. It makes a little more sense. So, um, so for example, um, let's say that we had 12 degrees, uh, 32 minutes, and 5 seconds. Right? What would this be in decimal degrees? Well, this would be equal to 12 degrees plus 32 minutes. One minute is 1 60th of, de of a degree. So 32 minutes is 32 60ths of a degree, right? So this would be 32 60ths degrees. And then 5 seconds... Well, one second is one sixtieth of a minute, or in other words, it's one thirty-six hundredth of a degree, right? So five seconds would be five thirty-six hundredths of a degree. So this would be plus five thirty-six hundredths degrees. And now to change those things into decimal, just pop it into your calculator and see what you get. In fact, your calculator might convert between... Uh, minutes, degrees, minutes, and seconds straight into decimal degrees on its own. I think mine does that. I'll, I'll show you how mine does it in a second. But, um, oh, let me do it like this. So 12 plus 32 over 60 plus 5 over 3600 
is approximately it's approximately 12.5347. Okay, so 12 degrees, 32 minutes, 5 seconds is approximately 12.5347 degrees. Um, we could go the other way around. And starting with uh, decimal degrees, like something like 12.4238 degrees, we could change that into degrees, minutes, and seconds as follows. So uh, I'm going to call this 12 degrees plus... 0 0.4238 degrees and the decimal part of this I'm going to multiply by 60 to change it to minutes okay this is going to be 12 degrees plus 0 0.4238 degrees uh, times 60 minutes per one degree right so the degrees you see the degrees will cancel and I'll be left with minutes so what is 60 times that? 60 times 0.4238 is 25.428 minutes now. Okay, minutes. Okay, that's good. Now if I want to change this decimal portion of the minutes to seconds, then I would do the same trick, right? I would say 12 degrees plus 25 minutes plus... 0 0.428 minutes, but I'm going to multiply that by 60 seconds per one minute. Now the minutes will cancel, and I'll be left with seconds. So 0.428 times 60 is um, 25.68. So I'm just going to cut to the chase, and I'm I'm going to so I'm going to round the 25.68 to 26 seconds, right? So I'm going to say that this is approximately 12 degrees. 25 minutes and 26 seconds okay so that's how we go from uh, decimal degrees to decimals or decimal degrees to degrees minutes and seconds um, you could skip a couple steps I think right if you can go straight from there to there more power to you um, I think I said I, I would show you how I did this in my how I can do this in my calculator. See, I have this little button. I have this little button over here that looks kind of like a little uh, minute button. I could be wrong, but I think it's a minute button. So if I put in third, or sorry, twelve degrees degrees right there, uh, thirty-two minutes and five seconds I'm guessing oh this isn't gonna work I don't think syntax maybe I can't do that oh it's given to me and uh, let, me, let me change something real quick Whoop. let me try again there you go So there's got to be a, a second button on here somewhere. If I've got degrees and minutes, I've got to have seconds somewhere. I'm not going to waste your time trying to hunt it down, though, on my calculator. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Maybe I'll do it like this. 12 degrees, 32 minutes, and then uh, 5 sixtieths minutes, right? That would be 5 seconds, I guess. Still giving me a syntax error for that, huh? Well, okay. I, I would have to find the seconds somewhere on my calculator, but but anyway, uh, so your calculator might go from uh, decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds, and back and forth and stuff. You, you, you just have to play around with it to figure it out, but doing it by hand isn't too terrible either. So uh, let me give you some to work on yourself. So let's convert 23 degrees, 6 minutes, 12 seconds to decimal degrees, to decimal degrees, 
and um, round to the nearest thousandth. So go ahead and give the video a pause and see if you can do that one. <clears throat> okay, so um, here's my solution. So I would say, well, so this is going to be 23 degrees plus 6 uh, 60ths degrees plus 12 three, uh, 36 hundredths degrees, right? Uh, so how much is that? 23 plus 6 sixtieths plus 12 36 hundredths is about, so it says to the nearest thousandth. To the nearest thousandth, um, so I've got tenths, hundredths, thousandths. That's three decimal places. So to the nearest thousandth, this would be 23.103 degrees. Okay, and here's another one. Let's go the other way around. So convert 47.512 degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds, uh, round to the nearest second. Okay, go ahead and give the video a pause and see if you can uh, work that one out on your own. Okay, so here we go. What do we get? 0. 0.512 times 60. Okay. Oh, minutes. Sorry. Times. 60 minutes or 60 seconds for one minute. So times so 0 0.72 times 60 is 43.2. But they said to round to the nearest second, so I'm just going to round 43.2 to 43. So I'm going to say 47 degrees, 30 minutes, 43 seconds, and that's that. Um, we can practice some arithmetic as well when dealing with uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So let's perform each operation, which makes it sound like <laughs> we're medical doctors or something. We're not. We're not surgeons. We're not performing a surgical operation, but we will uh, do some addition and subtraction, right? Those are arithmetic operations. Anyway, so let's do 32 degrees 11 minutes plus 53 degrees 26 minutes. I'll walk you through this, but you can basically think of this as combining like terms, right? You're going to add degrees with degrees. You're going to add minutes with minutes. The only thing you have to remember is that if you get above 60 minutes, then that has to round up a degree. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. On this particular problem, I don't think we have that issue, right? 32 plus 53 is 85. Oh, I should do this in blue to stay consistent. 85 degrees. And 11 plus 26 is 37 minutes, and that's that, right? No problem. On the other hand, 
if we had 45 degrees 45 seconds plus 55 degrees 55 seconds when we go to do this addition we get uh, uh, 45 plus oh that's 100 right so we get 100 degrees 100 minutes but that's not good enough we can't leave it in that uh, we can't leave it like this because 100 minutes is more than 60 minutes and 60 minutes is just a degree so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry the well how would we say it I mean we're working with base 60 here instead of base 10 so I guess we're carrying the 60 but it becomes a 1 it becomes 1 degree All right so we carry the 60 we have 101 degrees now but 60 fewer minutes so uh, 100 minus 60 is 40 so it's 101 degrees 40 minutes that's really that's really the what the final answer should look like same kind of uh, thing goes for subtraction, right? So you might have to do some, some borrowing. When you do the borrowing, you're borrowing one degree to get 60 minutes, right? So remember, it's kind of a strange kind of borrowing. It's not always necessary, though. Like in this case, if we have 53 degrees 26 minutes minus 32 degrees 11 minutes, uh, we can just do again we can just do this by like terms right so 53 degrees minus 32 degrees that would be 21 degrees and then 26 minutes minus 11 minutes would be 15 minutes and that's that right pretty straightforward I don't know why I called that part B <laughs> this is a math class who cares about the letters nah just kidding Okay, 55, we can do 55 degrees 45 minutes minus 45 degrees 55 minutes. Now this one, this one re will require us to borrow. So before we get started, notice that, you know, we can do 55 minus 45, that's just 10, no problem. But then doing 45 minus 55, well, that's negative 10, which is a little bit strange. So rather than doing that, I'm going to take this first one and I'm going to make it so that I have a greater number of minutes here than I do there. So that when I do the subtraction, I don't get any negative minutes. So the way that I do that is by borrowing one from my degrees up here. So instead of calling this 55 degrees 45 minutes, I'm call, going to call it 54 degrees. By borrowing a degree, I get 60 more minutes. So 60 plus 45 would be 105 minutes. Okay, so these two things are really the same. Except that now I can do the subtraction a little easier. So 54 minus 45 is 9, so it's 9 degrees. And then 105 minus 55 is 50. So it's 9 degrees, 50 minutes. And that's that. <clears throat> Okay, so that's degrees, minutes, and seconds. Um, a couple more definitions to kind of go over um, in this section. Um, okay, so it, it, this is an important one. If you haven't heard of standard position before, then you definitely should write down this definition. Um, I can tell you... Uh, I've had students in the past who have like struggled with this whole standard position idea and it, it's important for later on in the course that you understand what we mean by standard position. So an angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin and its initial side is on the positive x-axis. Okay. So let me draw a picture actually to maybe uh, illustrate this a little better. So if you had an angle, I'll do it in red, like this. Right, if that's your angle theta, then theta is not in standard position. Okay, standard position would be an angle whose vertex is at the origin, the initial side is on the positive x-axis, right? And then the terminal side can be, you know, wherever it is, right? Maybe that's it. So then theta here is in standard position. Right, that's standard position. 
I guess another picture of an angle that's not in standard position would be something like this. So maybe you have an angle whose uh, initial side is on the positive x-axis, but the vertex is not at the origin. It's like this instead. That's still not standard position, right? Still theta not in standard position, right? So anyway, so this one is in standard position. The, the vertex is at the origin, and the initial side is on the positive x-axis. Those are... That, that's what we mean by standard position. Now, an angle that's in standard position is said to lie in the quadrant in which its terminal side lies. Okay? I'll give you a couple examples of that. Okay, for example, determine the quadrant determine the quadrant quadrant, holy schmoly, I can't spell today determine the quadrant in which each angle lies I'll draw the angles in a second. Let me give myself some axes to work with. So let's say that the that one of your angles looks like that. And let's say that the other angle looks like that. All right, both of these angles are in standard position. Now, the question is, what in which quadrant do the angles lie? Maybe I'll call this theta and theta. All right. So what angle is theta in? Well, for part A, theta would be in quadrant 1. I'm going to use this symbol a lot. This just means that theta is in quadrant 1. Right? So theta is in quadrant 1. So is in quadrant 1. This one here, theta would be in quadrant 1, 2, 3, right? So theta here is in quadrant 3. And just as a refresher, maybe I should say, that's how we number the quadrants, right? We number them here. Uh, we start in quadrant 1 where x and y are both positive. And then we, and then we label them counterclockwise. So quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, okay, <clears throat> so that's that. Um, angles in standard position whose terminal sides lie on the x or y axis are called quadrantal angles. So they're terminal sides, right? If they're in standard position, then their initial side is along the positive x axis. But we're talking about their terminal side now. If the terminal side is either on an x axis or a y axis, then the angle is called a quadrantal angle. So, for example, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, these would all be quadrantal angles, right? Because uh, 90 degrees, for example, when it's in standard position, its initial side is there, and its terminal side would have to be on, on the positive y-axis, so that's a quadrantal angle. So 90 degrees, 180 degrees, which would get you out to here, right? That's a quadrantal angle. 270 degrees, <clears throat> which would get you to here. That's another quadrantal angle. 360 degrees would be quadrantal, etc. Right? So if their terminal side is on an axis, then it's a quadrantal angle. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> another piece of terminology. That angles with the same initial and terminal sides are called coterminal. So if they have the same initial and terminal sides, then they're going to look like the same angle unless you've written out like what the angle is supposed to measure. So what I mean by that is, <clears throat> uh, here's an example, right? So 35 degrees and, nine, and 395 degrees are coterminal, right? 35 degrees would get you to about there. 395 degrees would mean going all the way around the circle 360 degrees 
and then going 35 more degrees. <clears throat> so then obviously your terminal side is still going to be this same ray. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, but they are different angles because the 35 degree angle just gets you from here to here. The 395 de degree angle gets you all the way around and then back up uh, again. So, so they're different angles, but they are coterminal, right? So that's the word that we use for them. They're coterminal. So they're not the same. They're coterminal. In a, in a similar way, 50 degrees and negative 310 degrees are coterminal, right? 50 degrees gets you to there. 310 degrees goes around clockwise to the same place. <clears throat> so different angles, but they're coterminal. <clears throat> um, so let's do a couple examples of that. So find the angle of least positive measure, so the smallest positive angle, that is coterminal with the given angle. Okay, so we want to find the smallest positive angle that's coterminal with the given angle. Let's do this for 1,046 degrees. <clears throat> There's really no strategy here other than, you know, if they're coterminal, then they're off by 360 degrees, right? Because in order to get to that, in order to get, like, to this same location, uh, you know, you'd have to, like, add 360 degrees to whatever angle you're starting with or subtract 360 degrees from it or whatever. So to do this, I mean, you just keep subtracting 360 degrees until you get the smallest positive angle uh, that's, you know, coterminal with that. So I'm just going to do that on my calculator. 1046 minus 360 is 686. So I can subtract 360 again and I get 326. If I subtract 360 again, I'm going to get a negative angle, so I will have gone too far, right? Negative 34 degrees is too far. So the smallest positive angle that's coterminal with the one that was given is 326 degrees, right? Um, see if you can do the same thing for negative 90 degrees. So your goal is to find the smallest positive angle that's coterminal with that. So give the video a pause and see what you get. Okay, here's my answer. You should get 270 degrees. In this case, you're obviously not going to be subtracting 360. You're going to be adding 360. And if you add 360 once, then you automatically get a positive answer. And that answer is 270. <clears throat> Um, here's another example of the same thing, same kind of thing. Let's write an expression for all angles coterminal with 135 degrees. So we want an expression for all angles that are coterminal with 135 degrees. Well, as we saw in the previous example, coterminal angles with this angle are going to be off by some multiple of 360 degrees, right? You're either adding 360 or you're adding 360 twice or three times, or maybe you're subtracting 360 once, twice, or three times. So in general, I think we can express that as follows. We can say, well, any angle... Well, any angle that's coterminal with 135 degrees is going to have 135 degrees kind of a, as its base, but then we're going to be adding 360 degrees to it times some number k, right? Because maybe we're adding 2 times 360 or 3 times 360, or maybe we're subtracting 360, in which case we're adding 360 times negative 1, right? Or, or subtracting it twice, in which case we would do 360 times negative 2. So I think this is the expression k here. So we say where k is 
an integer. Now, most of you coming into this class, I think, have just come from uh, college algebra. Uh, at least if you were a COS student before the semester, then you just took college algebra before you got into this class. And in college algebra, you should have talked about what integers are. Okay, but just in case you have forgotten, an integer is a positive or negative whole number. Okay, so this is the expression that does the trick 135 plus 360 degrees times k, where k is an integer. In other words, a positive or negative whole number. Very good. Um, one last example. Go ahead and give the video a pause and, and write this one out. I'm not going to rewrite it on my page. Um, but it says, an airplane propeller rotates a thousand times per minute. How many degrees will a point on the edge of the propeller rotate through in two seconds? Okay, so an airplane propeller rotates a thousand times per minute. That's it. I feel like that's awfully slow, don't you think? Man, a thousand times per minute? That doesn't seem very quick to me. Well, I guess maybe, if, I mean, they're big propellers, right? So I guess that is pretty quick. Anyway, how many degrees will a point on the edge of the propeller rotate through in two seconds? Hmm. Well, so it rotates through, it does one complete rotation in one minute. One complete rotation is 360 degrees, right? So it goes through 360 degrees, 360 degrees in one minute. This is maybe a little confusing because we're not talking about like uh, minutes like a measurement of an angle. We're talking about minutes as a measurement of the passage of time, right? But anyway, so it goes through 360 degrees in one minute. Um, so how? So we want to know uh, how many degrees it rotates through in two seconds. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. 360 degrees is one rotation, right? But it goes through a thousand rotations. So it actually goes through a thousand times 360 degrees in one minute. Sorry, I almost led you astray there. Yeah, it goes through a thousand rotations. So that's a thousand times 360 degrees uh, in one minute. Now, um, we want to get rid of minutes, and we want to keep seconds. Uh, so we only want two seconds, though. Uh, so I can do it kind of like this. I can say in one minute there are 60 seconds. So this will tell us um, how many degrees per second, right? Because the minutes are going to cancel. We're going to be left with degrees per second. So how many degrees per second? And then if I want to know how much it rotates through in two seconds, well, then I can just double that, right? If it goes through this many degrees in, in one second, then it'll go through twice as many in two seconds. So let's see what we get. Oh, I think I could do that in my head. 360 divided by 60 is just 6, right? And 6 times 1,000 is 6,000. Uh, so, yeah, so I think this is just 6,000 degrees per second. Which means that in 2 seconds, it's going to go through 2 times 6,000 degrees. So it's going to go through 12,000 degrees in 2 seconds. Oh yeah, that so that propeller is rotating really fast. It goes through sixteen. It goes through sixteen and two thirds rotations, complete rotations every second. So that that okay. So that is pretty fast. That is really fast. My intuition was bad at the beginning of this problem, but no, this is making sense now. Okay, so there you go. Um, so that's 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 one way you could approach number nine. You might have thought of a different way to do it, and that's fine as long as you get to the same spot. Um, so that does it for section 1.1. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.